Welcome back to Goliath. We're going to be going over automated build systems today and how you can tie that into the firmware update function of Goliath. I'm with Alvaro, our lead engineer. Hi, Alvaro. What are we going to be talking about today? Uh, hey, Chris. Yeah, I'm really excited to show uh, this demo today. So we're basically going to do what you uh, described real quick. Uh, we're going to show how to build firmware uh, using a cloud environment and also using Goliath to push firmware updates uh, to devices in the field. So yeah, that's what we're going to walk through today. Okay, that's awesome. And so why would someone want to be doing this versus just, you know, plugging in a cable and updating locally on their on their desk? Yeah, yeah, the, for this uh, first question, that's a good one, actually. Uh, like you, when you want to like, maybe you have like a bug fix that you want to push to your devices and you already have like a bunch of devices out in the field, like you don't want to be like out there, like plugging your cable on each one of those devices uh, to push that update. So if you have a platform to, to be able to push that remotely, that's much easier. Uh, and especially in our case, as we make this process, uh, like we have the infrastructure for that. Uh, the only thing that you need to do is just like upload a new binary and then like target uh, to your proper devices and they're going to have that fix available for them. So in the IoT world, this is really important. Uh, to yeah, and that. we have shown uh, the DFU piece or the firmware update over the air in the past. We've done that with NRF91. You've shown it with Ethernet and a Bluetooth device. And then we've also shown it with Wi-Fi when... Uh, when MCU boot was available on Espresso. Uh, so then how is this different than just, so this is like an, another step in that process, right? It's not just compiling locally and dropping the artifact onto the Goliath servers. There's actually a, a cloud compilation piece now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, this is a, I would say that is more of a realistic uh, scenario because you're probably like when, uh, on your company, you're going to be working uh, with a distributed team. Like you have multiple uh, people uh, working on a project uh, and you're probably going to be using uh, something to to uh, maintain your source code, like something like GitHub, Bitbucker, or things like that. Uh, and it would be nice, for example, um, like be developing those things, create like a branch with a new feature uh, and be able to like push that uh, firmware, the, that fix, that work that you're being, uh, that you're doing on this branch to uh, a given device. But then also like the, the part of having the cloud compilation is that multiple people maybe are using like different environments. Maybe someone is developing on Windows, others on Linux, oh, uh, yeah. maybe another one is on Mac OS. And maybe for doing like a small test, they made like a, a small change to their SDK directly and didn't push that, didn't reflect to the repository. So maybe they can have like slight different builds uh, on their computer. And maybe for example, oh, when, uh, when the firmware is building on Chris' computer, it's having this bug. But when I'm building on my computer, it's not having this bug. Yeah. It's the yeah. the whole, it works on my computer story, right? That's right. That's why like <laughs> a lot of technologies appear around that, like Docker and things like that to make builds more reproducible. So that's the idea yeah. here. If we leave the final build, like the firmware build to be built on a cloud environment, this is more reproducible. It's more trustable because we know that it's going to work always the same time. It's going to have every time it's going to have the same dependencies, the same source code and those kind of things. So that's why using a cloud environment to build that uh, is really important on a production environment, for example. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think that, you know, this is another good example of software tools, tools from the software world, rather, that are getting finally in the firmware world as well, firmware and hardware, you know, doing continuous integration, doing continuous deployment. This really enables those sort of things. And, you know, it's not like, you have to only use a cloud compilation engine, right? This is a, another yeah. tool that layers on top of building locally on your machine. So you still can, you know, you're not dependent on a cloud only tool, but this is now adding another layer that enables it and enables better testing and more reliable software, it feels like as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like uh, we're not going to remove the, the local compilation from the equation. Like I'm going to show here, I'm actually going to push the initial firmware on the device on my machine here directly, uh, no problem. But then later for these uh, sequential builds, uh, the device is going to get from uh, the DFU feature on our platform. So this kind of like simulates uh, what can happen uh, when a project goes to production. So you flash the devices or that device is going to be flashed on the factory and provisioned there and then goes out in the field and then like you need to push uh, builds to it through like the cloud environment. So it's what can happen um, on a project. Great. Yeah. Well, let's take a look here. Uh, so you said you're going to flash stuff locally. Let's. So where, where are we starting with all of this? Yeah. So I have my project here uh, on the platform and I didn't create this particular device here. So I'm going to show kind of simulate, like I said, a provisioning uh, process on the factory. here. So I'm going to open my uh, IDE here 
and I'm going to flash my device here with the firmware that I have here. So this device is going to be clean, uh, running the latest version, uh, and then we can provision the device to connect to our platform. So I'm going to flash real quick here, um, and then we are going to create this device here on our platform. So one thing that I want to do, like this is a ESP32, but, but I want to identify the device properly. So one thing that I added uh, here to this firmware uh, is a command to check the hardware ID. So uh, here I have a, a serial interface. So if I type hardware ID, I can get like the serial number of the ESP32 device. So this, again, can be something that you do on a factory. Uh, and then so this is like a unique ID that's actually programmed in by Espresso versus something that you assign as a serial number, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and then for separating the devices, maybe I can have like multiple uh, microcontrollers and different uh, boards here, but I created a blueprint here for my device, which is for ESP32. So all the firmers that I'm going to build for this project uh, is tied to this blueprint. Um, and then I'm going to add the hardware ID here and generate the, the device here. So now I have the credentials here, I can connect to our platform. And on this firmware here, I also added some uh, commands to set the credentials. So the first one that I need to set is the Wi-Fi uh, in this case. So Wi-Fi um, SSID, I'm gonna put my test uh, Wi-Fi network here. Uh, I have a guest <laughs> network, uh, Wi-Fi PSK is the same thing. I this... finally started doing this in demo videos as well. I was like, oh, I probably should do like Alvaro and make a test I, a test Wi-Fi <laughs> setup. Uh, it's yeah. good. <laughs> and now the important part to connect to our platform, I'm going to put the credentials here. So the PSK um, ID, which is the one that, that I just copied from our platform. And also I'm going to copy the PSK here. So live, PSK, and then go. Then now it's going to connect to our platform. Um, and I can go here and see... Um, it's going to go online and start pushing data here for the refresh here. Yeah, it's already sending counter. Yeah, not counter. Uh, and if I refresh here, it's going to show us online uh, here. And also, uh, it's generating some logs here. Let me put here. Oh, it's only on boot if I restart the board here. Uh, it's going to report the running version. So it's running version 1.0.7 here. Just uh, a reminder that we are going to update this to 1.0.8, for example. Uh, so it just... Uh, reported here. Yeah, it's running 1.0.7. So this is our firmware. It's working like we provisioned locally here. So it's all good. Uh, but also like we we pushed this uh, this firmware before using CI CD. Uh, so that same firmware is already available here, but the device tried to check if it is running the desired version and it's already running the laser. So that's why it didn't uh, download anything. Uh, but for this demo and this repo, we are going to make available for, for you guys to check later. Uh, what we did here is to use GitHub Actions to build uh, our firmware remotely. So we have this uh, workflow ready here. So when I push a Git tag, it's going to trigger this workflow here to build the firmware and then uses our CLI to push to our platform and then create an artifact there. So to simulate that, I'm going to make a, a small change here. Maybe now I change the counter here to uh, be just another counter. Um, and then I'm going to do like a git commit here. So let me add this file here and say just another <laughs> counter change. And then let's create a git tag here. Um, I'm going to tag it 1.0.8. I can add like a message here if I want, but we're not doing that right now. And then I'm gonna do a git push oranging. I'm doing uh, on a branch here as an example, but can be on the main branch. Maybe you, you only do that build when it's on a on the main branch and you have like final versions, or maybe on a PR you, you validate that you can only create like beta tags, and then you you add that beta tag to our platform. You can do like all sorts of things, like depend on what what is the workflow that works best for you uh, on your company. Right. Right, and these are like the tags you're creating. All these, you know, these are just things that line up well. But you can optimize for whatever your process is, whatever's working in your factory or your yeah. development firmware process, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. It's just about how you then tie them together later. Yeah, exactly. Like, like for example, this thing that I just described, I can create like a, a pull request here and have this like beta branch. And maybe on our platform, you create a release with a bad beta tag, and only beta devices are going to be can be targeted exactly so you right. can yeah. even like do that, that kind of like testing right because um, i think a lot of people would worry about okay so i go and push some random version and if they're 
what if I don't want it to load to all my customers' devices? Well, like you said, you tag it so it's only going to certain things. You also could make sure that you hold it back, right? So when you actually create a release, you're showing this all the way from a commit to do everything automatically, but you could yep. say, don't release that firmware until I click the button, right? And that's like on the, the Goliath console, you could see on the firmware page to actually to actually roll out and roll back if you want. Yeah, yeah, that's actually a good point. The way that I set up the, the workflow here is to create just the artifacts, not the release I'm gonna show on the console. Uh -huh. But you can also Great. like, so I can create the release manual to avoid those kind of things. But I could also like ultimate create the release with a beta uh, tag. I could do like all sorts of things. Of course, it's just using our CLI. So our CLI yeah. allows you to do whatever uh, you can like to fit for your workflow in your company. Uh, so you can do that. So the, the CI is building here takes about a minute to build uh, the firmware. Um, could you tell us yeah, a little it's... bit about the, so the, this is using the Arduino SDK that we've shown in past the past as yes well. um it's using the arduino sdk we, we are planning to do another one with our zephyr sdk which is our more recommended uh path uh but for easy of demo and like make things like a little bit yeah. a little bit fast this is using our arduino sdk and the platform io uh tool right chain. i think this also shows again that uh, the goliath api is not tied to just the zephyr uh, sdk it, you know it can work with lots of different software that's out there it is a, a generic endpoint but the tooling is in in the Arduino SDK or the Zephyr SDK. And like you said, this is just for the demo here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so as you can see here, it already finished and there's a step here that uploads the binary to Goliath. And if I go here to the artifact page, now we're gonna have the 1.0.8 here yeah, available. There it is. All, no hands yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. on the bike, so it's all being done automatically. So what I can do here now is to create a release so my device can be targeted. So I'm gonna select here my blueprint uh, and then select my artifact here, 1.0.8. I can give a name here for this release, like demo release. Um, and then already like flag it to be available uh, to the device. So if I go and hit save here, my device is already going to start downloading <laughs> the version yeah, here. Great. So, yeah. so imagine that this device is out in the field. It can already like receive the latest version uh, and download from our platform. Uh, this can take uh, a bit of a time, uh, but uh, we can also uh, wait or not on this video. But this was like the point here was most to, more to show the whole workflow of doing that uh, using a cloud environment, using um, like Git as a tool for you to also like uh, trigger those builds and those kind of things uh, and to modernize more like the way they can push for material devices. Yeah, that's great. And like you said, you, I mean, so all of the things that people see in the Goliath console, that is using the Goliath API underneath the covers. And so the thing that you did creating release, you know, making sure it's ready to go, that could be scripted as well. So that if you wanted to, you could do a all the way soup to nuts, uh, push push a, a commit and see it show up on your device, which is, I mean, it feels like magic to me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the the nice part about like having those tools like uh, available for you to make uh, it fit your workflow. So it's really flexible. We are not we are trying to um, not be like super opinionated on the ways that you're gonna do stuff. Uh, and like I, I, sh I showed here, like I was providing the device using serial, uh, but like probably yeah. the factor is gonna be different. Uh, so like how you're gonna do the provision is also like a decision. Like we can help uh, you decide like how you're gonna do that but we are not enforcing you to do uh, just like one single way. Right, a lot of flexibility is important there. And I did want to call that out actually, because that that's something we ha haven't showed as much in the past. We've sh you've shown how to do it uh, on Bluetooth before, right? We have a different video about that yep. where you're loading credentials over Bluetooth. Now we're showing it over Serial. There's a, a Zephyr shell as well, where we can, we're showing that sort of thing. So basically it's all about getting the device credentials into there so that then it can validate itself onto the Goliath cloud and say, hey, here's my credentials, let me in. <laughs> and the Goliath yep. cloud lets it in and allows it to get firmware updates and, and all the, send all the data at once. Yeah, yeah. maybe this is a device that is like more targeted for um, final customer, uh, final users. Like let's say that is a smart lamp that they are gonna set up when they arrive, they buy and like set up at home. So maybe the device is gonna receive the credentials and right away like download the firmware uh, the latest firmware when they start working uh, on their home. So this is a flow that we we see a lot with those kind of like customer facing devices. So yeah, again, depends on the use case. There are devices that are going to be all provisioned on the factory already and pre-provisioned there. Uh, so yeah, a lot of ways to to do that kind of thing. Yeah.
That's great. And if people have questions about how they can set up their devices, you can always come over to our Discord channel, Goliath.io slash Discord. We have a forum, forum.goliath.io, and you can always send us an email, hello at Goliath.io or devrel at Goliath.io. You'll reach all of us and we'll, uh, we'll, we'd love to talk to you about your application. Please do subscribe to the YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you, Alvaro, for this wonderful demo, and I'm looking forward to more in the future. Yeah, sure. Uh, we are gonna add some some more docs to to this um, to this repo here and make it uh, available for you uh, all to try. Um, so yeah, uh, that's it for this video. All right, we'll see you next time.